Pastor Ed here again with online daily devotions for Saturday, August the 8th, 2020. Well, the electricity is finally back on, uh, both here at church and also over at the Parsonage. Um, but as of late Thursday afternoon, JCPNL was saying that it was uh, um, going to be Tuesday, maybe, before power was restored at the Parsonage, whereas my brother had checked, and, and they said for him, he lives on Stonehurst Boulevard, the old Hope Lutheran Parsonage, uh, his was supposed to be back on by Thursday midnight, 1130, whatever. Uh, however, ironically, I guess, as things turned out, uh, uh, our power at the Parsonage was back on by about 6 or 7 on Thursday night, uh, and his wasn't restored at all. And in fact, as of Friday afternoon, uh, when I talked to him, it still wasn't um, restored. So, you know, go figure, right? Well, needless to say, like many people, and perhaps many of you as well, my, my patience was starting to wear a little thin uh, over the, the length of time it was taking to restore power. And so I'd like to hold on to that thought for just a moment because I want to come back to it um, when I share today's scripture reading. But first, we're going to begin once again with those three major pieces of the service of responsive prayer in the hymnal, namely the, the Lord's Prayer, uh, the Creed, and also Luther's Morning Prayer. Let us begin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. And now, Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, the scripture for Saturday morning, uh, August uh, the 8th, uh, is uh, taken from the Psalms, Psalm 145, uh, verses 8 through 9, and then 14 through 21. And let me share that with you right now. It goes like this. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. The Lord upholds all who are falling, failing, and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hands, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh and bless his holy name forever and ever. A moment ago, I asked you to keep and hold the thought of um, patience wearing thin or the idea of patience. I used to think when I was much younger uh, that I had all kinds of patience. And I gradually realized over time, e either that or I was losing it, but I gradually realized over time that I wasn't quite as patient as I thought I was. Um, patience is definitely a virtue. 
Um, reminds me a couple of stories that I just want to share with you real quick. Man was once walking through a supermarket with a screaming baby in his shopping cart. And this other shopper, a woman, noticed that time and time again, the man would say very calmly, keep calm, Albert, keep calm, Albert. And finally, in admiration for the man's patience, um, as the child continuing to scream and fuss and make a big bother, the woman finally walked up to him and she said, Sir, I have to commend you for your patience with, with baby Albert. And the man replied, Madam, I am Albert. So he wasn't quite as patient as, as maybe uh, uh, she thought he was. The other story uh, is, is a cute one. Um, there's a pastor by the name of Joel Gregory that tells the story of this seminary professor uh, who had, throughout his long career, 30, 40 years, taught the, the Christian graces of, of love and, and forbearance and patience and all those virtues. Um, well, when he retired, he decided to do all these little odd jobs around the house, and one of them is that he poured a, a brand new concrete driveway at his house. And when he was finally finished doing that work by himself, he, he went in to rest. He got a glass of iced tea, and, and then he stepped back out to, to view his handiwork, his proud achievement, and he discovered that the neighborhood kids were, were putting their, their footprints and their handprints in all the wet concrete. Well, the professor just lost it. And he started screaming and yelling, chasing the kids down in a rage. He was gonna, he was gonna catch them and give them a whoop and a spanking uh, if he ever caught up to him. In fact, hearing the commotion, the the uh, professor's wife rushed out into the yard, and she could see a couple doors down. The angry professor had grabbed one of the kids, and he was about to paddle him. And she yelled, "What? Why? What are you doing? What are you doing?" Uh, and she said, "What a shame." For 40 years, you have taught love and, and forgiveness and, and forbearance and patience. Now look at you. You've lost it all. You have none of those things. To which he replied, Ma'am, that was all in the abstract. This is in the concrete. Patience. Um, again, I think people are right when they call it a virtue. Um, very few of us have it. Um, few people have it all the time. The few that do demonstrate patience from time to time don't have it all the time. Uh, and as I say, I have to confess that I'm not as, as patient, uh, patient as I once thought I was. Well, it's interesting when we listen to that psalm for this morning in Psalm 145, how patient God is. And there's that, that phrase that, the, that opens up the psalm, that the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. That appears over and over again in the Old Testament, particularly in the Psalms. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. That, that God is a, is a patient God, uh, willing to forgive, uh, willing to uphold uh, the people who who need help to 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 put up with all of our foolishness uh, and nevertheless still support us uh, and bless us and pick us up when we're down and 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 keep us going when we we kind of lose our way. Um, you know what a wonderful message that is. And again, we've had this theme of generosity and abundance, and and here we hear you know a God again is just this. This merciful and gracious God who's slow to anger. I love that phrase. And, and abounding in steadfast love. Nothing, nothing is going to change that. Uh, I often say to the kids in, in catechism, they probably get sick of it. But I, I heard it once and I think it's so true. That we could, we could never do anything to make God love us more. But by the same token, we can never do anything to make God love us less. Steadfast love. There's nothing that's going to change that. God loves us no matter what. Now, he might not approve of us at times. At times, he might not approve um, or endorse the things that we do. In fact, God's word is full of, of, of admonitions and on expectations and so forth. Uh, but God's love is never in question. Uh, God's love, uh, this patient forbearing love that that hangs in there with us even when we are quite frankly unlovable we nevertheless have a god who
who loves us still, who loves us now, who loves us always. And when you think in terms of the whole biblical story and how God, how, how much God's patience must have been tried um, down through the centuries, all the foolishness that not just everybody in the world, but, but in particular God's people, the people of faith who, who supposedly were trying to, to do what they're supposed to do. They were always falling short, always making mistakes, always doing foolish things. And God's love never wavered. God's patience never wavered to the point where God even uh, sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world um, to make things right because there was no way that we were, were capable of ever making it right ourselves. That's a, not just a loving God, that's a patient God. And it's that patient God that, uh, that, that we're talking about this morning uh, to wrap up our week of God's generosity and abundance God is full of generosity. God is full of blessings. Um, and we receive all kinds of abundance from God, not the least of which is the abundance of God's patience. Well, I hope you have a great day. And let's close now with the, with the prayer of the week that we've been sharing and now for the last time. Dear God, we thank you for inviting us to the banquet feast that has no end and is filled with joy and life in your presence, through your Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen.